seen right there, um, there's two regular distress inks in with those gray oxide inks. Uh, we also pulled out the Dilutions Mica Mist and some Distress Resist, because why not? We're just playing here. And also pulled out Pearlex and Perfect Pearls. Um, and again, in shades that looked like they were going to coordinate with um, the palette. So we have white, we have rose pink, a few different shades of um, pink and green, and then the bright yellow. And eventually I'll get to mixing them in um, on top. So, yeah, this is going to be a roller coaster of a ride, and I um, hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> uh, while working with Perlex, you do need a soft, dry brush, and you want to keep it dry. Um, it just makes putting the mica on a lot easier. And for this, I just started out with cheap Georgia Pacific paper uh, from Walmart because I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not going to work. And, well, figured if I have to throw it out, I'm not wasting good paper. So, it is what it is. <laughs> so, I uh, did have Andrew also run some, fo or, yeah, embossing folders through the Sizzix for me before he went to work uh and I do end up trying to do a couple with these, and this is where the dog started carrying on, and I forget that I have ink on the jelly plate. Yeah, this was a typical, oh my gosh, I'm not supposed to be doing this kind of day when I recorded this. So, thought I would get to do the voiceover yesterday where everything's still fresh in my head. No, we can't do that because the memory card has something wrong with it. I could not get it to work. So thankfully my cousin was able to get that fixed and I got everything uploaded and now today we're going to do the voiceover and i lucky if I can remember what I did five minutes ago, let alone what I did two days ago. So we will get through this together. So um, as you've seen, I dropped the jelly plate onto the glass mat and it stays on there perfectly. It is not budging. And then I laid, you know, the stencil can lay on top there. We're going to use that. Um, throughout the, the jelly process here. And um, so I guess without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and shut up and speed this up and put some music to it. Because basically from here on out, all I'm going to do is just keep taking different inks and smushing them down. Sometimes I'll take the brayer through it. Sometimes I'll hit it with water. Um, I'll stop, dry a layer because... I don't have space here in, in the um, office to lay stuff out to dry. Um, and that, that's something that I did notice with doing this. It, it does need time to dry in between layers. Um, I know there's lots of videos out there on it, on jelly plates and whatnot. Like I said, I, we're new to the jelly plate world. So it's like a kid at Christmas with a brand new toy. You know, you just got to sit down and play with it. And, and have fun and figure out what's what. And I, I thought instead of messing with acrylic paints and all that because of limited space and just last night was not a night I wanted to be in the kitchen and uh yeah we're not gonna get into, we're not gonna get into the grandmother thing today. Oh my goodness yesterday was a bad bad day. Oh so I'm gonna you know, I'm going to stutter over my words like typical. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you guys are so used to how I fumble through things. Oh my goodness. So anyway, back to the project, not the uh, what may end up turning into an alternative channel just so I don't lose my sanity. <laughs> um, I put the layer of ink down, then I laid the stencil on top, and then I just smushed the paper over top and just kept rubbing it. And as you see, I got a really nice transfer there. I mean, I was like all happy. I'm like, yay, my first one. It worked. It worked. The dang on thing worked. If you've ever seen Police Academy, I think it's Police Academy one where they do that. It worked. It worked. And I'll, I'll leave the expli expletive out for that matter. But then I'll take a second sheet of paper here and just pick up the ghost image that's on there. And it comes out really pretty as well. And actually some of my favorite prints were where I was cleaning my brayer off and whatnot. So you get a positive and a negative of the stencil. 
and then I, I'll end up cutting these down and trimming off the really ugly crappy parts um, and turning some of them into cards and um, then the scraps from those I have turned into tags and I, I didn't include the tags on this video um, I'm gonna go ahead and record that on a second video um, because this is just this gets way too long but again we're just smushing and I apologize if you can hear them growling now please stop oh my goodness I do apologize a day in the life of a working what sometimes can be sounds like an animal farm but oh my gosh I would not trade our fur babies for anything nothing at all okay guys well like I said five minutes ago I'm going to shush set this to some music we'll let you guys enjoy the process of just different products um, and sprays over top of the plate and picking them up and seeing what happens and and whatnot and you'll see the flub ups as well I did not edit it out because like I said I've never done this before so I didn't realize I grabbed regular inks with oxide inks and oh good lord so I will catch you up here when we get to the card making process and let you know what I did from there okay guys I will catch you back
Okay, guys, I thought I'd pop back in here and let you know um, what's going on here. Um, these are the dried prints that I have um, set aside, and obviously you've seen the different layers I put on them. And I thought I'd pull out one of my crappy... Um, stop. I've got work to do. Stop. Um, I thought I'd pull out one of my crappy Versamark pads, and, and I keep just for mixed media and inking projects and whatnot. And just take an ink blender and kind of smush some of that bursa mark in the in the stencil itself, and that way when I it'll grab the mica from the Pearlex or the Perfect Pearls. Um, and there there's different brands of the the mica out there, and um, I didn't want the full stencil. I just wanted it to pick up here and there and, and I'm going to use my little Nuvo scoop um, and stop and just sprinkle a little bit of powders here and there and with mica if you've never worked with it before you need very very little a little bit definitely goes a long way um, so yeah you just scoop it out or sprinkle it out or however you want to uh, apply it to your paper and then you'll take that soft dry brush that I was showing you at the beginning um, any kind of makeup brushes are really good for that because they are nice and soft like a blush um, brush and then you just want to dust it out and I like to keep my um, seals on the inside just to try to keep down some of the mess and I put the lids back on right away because if you've watched our videos, you know I am a klutz and something is going to go on the floor, get burnt, get something. It never fails. It's like, you know, I joke around all the time. It's like, we should name our channel. This is how not to craft art. <laughs> just, uh, just us being quirky. So... Yeah, we're just going to put this powder on and brush it around. And I don't wet that brush when I clean off the powders, that crappy looking microfiber towel there. I just take the dry brush over and um, swoosh it off on there to, to get rid of the color so that I don't transfer any weird color to something else. Now, it doesn't look like much here um, because you do have that extra layer of stuff on top and it's still kind of dusty. But once it... You wipe off the excess and tilt it in the light. It's an absolutely beautiful shine. Yep, just wipe that brush off and you're good to go. I really like that that plate, that jelly plate holds the paper so well. I know that's not what that's meant for, but it worked for me for the day I was doing this. And yeah, as you've seen there, you got to see the real pretty shine. And I'm just going to continue doing that. Um, throughout the rest of these here. Lay the stencil down, smush some ink in, add some mica, and build things up from there. So let's speed this section up and I will catch you back.
Okay, so what we are doing here, or what I did here, I should say, is take that stencil that came in the kit again and use it an additional way, and that was to run it through the um, Big Shot with a partial piece of our Spellbinders mat. Um, oh, sorry, baby butter. Um, the mat that comes with the our Spellbinders Grand Caliber was too big, so I cut it in half so I could run it through the Big Shot with the stencil and do some dry embossing on it. And I pulled out three colors of ink here that I thought I wanted to use, and I think I end up switching one out. As you can see, anytime those fingers are tapping, that's me thinking, like, do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Maybe I want this color. And that, at this point here, is where I finally realized that you, ding -a you grabbed regular Distress inks along with the oxide inks. It's like no wonder I wasn't getting the layering that I was expecting. You're like, ay, ay, ay. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had those moments of like, what in the world? Yeah, this weird gap that's right here right now, that, that is where I am looking at the wall thinking, oh, you blooming idiot, you know what you did, and how did you do this? And oh, Like I said, I was I was very sidetracked, and with sirens and everything blowing that day, it just it was it was horrendous. But hey, we're gonna make it work because why not? I'd rather make something work than to just chuck it in the trash. It's like you've already gone so far on, and it's like why not? You you think it's already ruined? You really can't do any more damage to it, so why not keep going? And see if you can actually turn it into something. So yeah, I'm just doing some typical ink blending. Starting off the page, bringing it on the page. And keeping a light hand at it. I don't get the, didn't get the paper completely saturated with it. I didn't want a uh, perfect look. I'm kind of getting better with that uh, not being a perfect look. Just because my hands won't hold up to uh, the ink blending. And any of you that have done it know that I mean, you do enough of it and keep layering and layering, it wears on your hands. And um, I did order one of the pink and main um, ergonomic brushes, and we're waiting on that to come. And we're going to, you know, I'll see how that does with my hands as well. Um, I do go the. 27th of this month back to the surgeon um, to see if he's going to um, do surgery or not. So I'm trying to get some videos up for you guys beforehand um, and then Andrew can hopefully have his um, shop set up and he can start sharing some stuff with you guys as well. So as you see there um, I did decide to switch out the pink for the yellow and I wasn't too sure about it at first because the, the Twisted Citron and the Squeezed Lemonade started looking almost too close. and But in the end, I, I, I like the result. And I love the color that um, I do believe is Peacock Feathers. And it's the regular ink, but the Peacock Feathers and the Twisted Citron, I love the green that it gave me with the blend. Oh, yeah, I'm not a speedy ink blender, and a lot of times when you, you do see people um, ink blending on on camera, it's done, they they do have it speeded, sped up. Speeded up, yeah, we're, oh, you think I live in Pennsylvania or something? Oh, my goodness. But, as you can see, you know, it, it, it takes time, and just... I was so, I don't know, by this point it's like I, I'm just playing because why not? Yeah, no, you're going to have to do a voiceover by this time and it's like, okay, we're going to roll with it. We're just going to keep blending away and doing our thing and just having a good old time. 
time. So I didn't realize I was supposed to this long. It does not seem that long when you're sitting there doing it to you having to watch it back and it's like, oh my god, are you done yet? Now, in my, um, on my desk, I have one of the little two drawer organizers, if you're familiar with the Dollar Tree organizers, the little two drawer thingies. I keep them, all my ink pads, in that little drawer and then I just pull them out as I need them until they get too crappy and then I'll actually throw them out. But I like to use them better um, as they get more ink absorbed. They, they just seem to, for me, to work better. <clears throat> if you've seen the little blue bag coming in there in the corner, that's my new embossing tool. I had to throw the other one out because it just, oh my gosh, I don't know what was in that thing, but it made me sneeze. It irritated my nose so bad. So I took a couple of the organza bags and some cheesecloth and some baby powder and I made my own and I just keep it in a mason jar lid. Roxy, stay out of the garbage bin. No. That is the one thing we are going to have trouble with with this puppy is the garbage bin. Oh my goodness. I mean, in the office here, it's just paper and maybe a alcoholic beverage bottle in there. Mm -hmm. I'll never say, but <laughs> oh well. At 46 years old, if I want to enjoy a beer while I'm crafting, I'm going to enjoy a beer, and that just happens to be a red peach. Yeah, that's or yeah, yes, red peach ale is quite satisfying. So um, right now all I did was trim that down to uh, standard part size four and a quarter by five and a half. And I think I do end up trimming it off just a little bit more to make it a tiny bit smaller just because I like that white border on the, on the cards themselves. Mm, I have no idea what the hold up is here. Let me get you guys past this. Okay, so we are going to get ready to assemble this card finally. So the panel itself I've trimmed down to three and three quarters by five. It's a half inch smaller on each side so that there's just a little bit of a white border to go around um, the outside of the card. I, I just happen to personally like seeing that. I've taken my scraps and I've trimmed them down. I left myself a wider piece and a more narrow piece. I wasn't sure how I want it to go so I was like oh I'll just audition both pieces and see if I like a wider piece or a more narrow piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I do end up going with the the wider piece. <clears throat> now in the stamp set they have some really pretty sentiments. Um, I used some WOW embossing powder and when we picked this WOW embossing powder up, or not WOW, Zing embossing powder up years ago when we first began, um, I had no idea what I was going to do with this color. I like this color but where am I going to use this color? It fits this kit perfectly, just like the Twisted Citron um, Distress Oxide ink fits this kit perfectly. It just matches the greens in it so well, so, so well. And it just made me happy, it made me smile. 
Now, as you, I don't. This is something I like to do um, when I'm not sure about how something's going to fit. I I try to, like I said, with the paper, audition it, hold that paper up that I'm going to stamp on, and see what the sentiment looks like. Kind of hover it over where I kind of think I want it, and give myself more of a visual um, aspect of how things are going to look. <clears throat> I'm going to bring in the Misty, and I apologize for the way this Misty looks. Oh my goodness, it needs a bath very, very badly. Um, so please, please ignore the, the messy Misty. It's a well-used Misty, that, that's for sure. And we finally did uh, get a bar magnet. I had had the last of smashing my fingers with magnets and getting caught in between magnets and yeah. So we finally got a bar magnet and I am so happy. That little book of holes. So like the um, inks and everything else I bring the embossing powders in and showcase them as well or audition them and see you know which color do I think I like? What do I think is going to pop on here? What do I think is going to coordinate better here? Just, I don't want to say stupid stuff that runs through my head, but it, it's my thinking process on how I put things together. Now, I do end up stamping this in distress, or not distress, um, verbal <coughs> mark. Please stop. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I, I apologize. Um, I do end up stamping the sentiment in verbal mark dazzle. Um, which is a Versamark ink. It's a sticky ink, clear sticky ink for embossing and watermarking and whatnot, but it has a little bit of a frosted feeling to it. And I think that's actually what it's called is Versamark Frosted. I don't know if it's still um, available or not. It's something we've had for... Please stop now. Stop. Go lay down. Stop. Oh my goodness, I apologize. Absolutely apologize. Oh. You're all y'all are gonna think I'm a horrible person. I I just would wanted to get this done for you guys and of all days they will not just mind their manners. Oh <sighs> so these heart guys heart border dies. If Ping and Main still has any in stock, I will put them in the link down below. Um, I wanted to add something to the sentiment because I didn't want just this plain block. So I pulled out this thin row of hearts and it's going to leave a scalloped edge and then the little hearts that pop out, I'm going to go ahead and keep them in my little dish on my desk and I'll, I'll use them to a uh, adorn something else but it also cuts a really nice border piece and I'm going to use that border piece up along the edge of the vine piece um, that I've already trimmed it fit that perfectly yeah. you, you hear what I'm, I'm yeah our one older our chihuahua he's not too fond of having a puppy in the house and this puppy is a three month old roughly we're guessing um petty lab mix and she's just adorable and she does not realize how big she is we don't know the situation really that she came out of other than it was not a good one but thankfully she's has a very good demeanor very very good demeanor she's absolutely lovable and friendly and but our older Chihuahua, he just, he wants no part of it. And he keeps growling and snapping and just being a cranky old fart. And so, Roxy, the new baby, is over in the corner now laying down on her blanket. So maybe we can get through the rest of this without any more drama. And y'all having to listen to me sound like some mad woman chasing after heathen children. Oh, my goodness even though sometimes that's about what these guys remind me of some bad ones but I wouldn't have it any other way absolutely would not have it any other way I love our babies 
All right, so let's assemble this card. Now they have everything cut out, worked out, the whole nine yards. We're going to start putting things together. Um, I do like my reptile glue. Um, just like with art glitter. Um, yeah, got to keep a needle in it. Um, stainless steel needle because any other pins, it will rust. And then the rust will clog up the holes. And I keep ours in a Jane Davenport bottle just so I can get that thin thin lines because this reptile glue it does not take a lot of not at all oh my goodness a little bit definitely goes a long way and I always have to check to see if I got my car going the right direction because without fail I tend to put the car the panel on upside down and don't catch it till it's done and over with and like oh really I so, I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that has done that. But there is that uh, little heart border die that we cut out, or heart border frame. And I'm just going to dab a little tiny bit of glue behind the thicker part there at each of the hearts and just adhere that down to that vine strip. We dot dot dot. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I I guess I was just moving at a turtle's pace the day I was doing this. Oh my goodness! I did not realize it. Like I said, do I watch it back? And it's like, hands. What what world were you in this this year? Be thankful I deleted the original audio because I wrote well, one and we would have got copyright strikes right and left because it had um, Pandora playing in the background. And I think it was like 70s, 80s, I guess what would be, what would be considered like the hard rock of a time, like ACDC and um, George Thorogood and you know, a couple of the others. And, it's like that's what I was in the mood to listen to that day and yeah it was interesting did I put that piece on crooked no I did not I was sitting there thinking oh I just looked at that card when I was showing it to my mom and I'm like I think I put that piece on crooked so I'm looking at the screen and I'm thinking, oh my god, you blooming idiot, what did you do? I did nothing. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so the little sequins that came in the pink and main kit are these beautiful little flowers. Little cup sequins. And do they ever shine? Oh my goodness. The camera does not do them justice. Not at all. They are just so shimmery and pearly and shiny. <clears throat> so I'm going to end up having to put some foam tape um, on one section of the sentiment because of the panel being popped up and then I'm going to put glue on the end that's going to go over top of the vine uh, to make it all it together cohesively. <clears throat> I encourage you to dig through your uh, dies. See if you can use them for something other than just what they're meant to be for. I do have um, some little bags coming up here. I'm going to try to record, and I took a die that was meant for one thing, and I'm using it as a decoration on something else. Um, it actually works kind of well. It, it's it's kind of cute, so that'll be another um, taking a die, you know, and, and stretching its worth.
and I do apologize if you can hear those Jake breaks. Those trucks get frustrating. They have more than enough time to use their actual brakes to slow down from the time they come off of the bridge until they hit the stoplight. There's probably every bit of a mile, if not mile and a half gap between the two. And still, they hit that Jake at our house and ride it for about a quarter of a mile to the light. And it just, it gets infuriating, especially at three o'clock in the morning when you're just finally getting able to be able to go to sleep because Andrew doesn't get home until one, about one thirty, two o'clock in the morning now. And because of the shift change at work and he works out of state and yeah, just as we're getting to bed and then we get that to listen to it. So if you're not familiar, this little tool that I'm using is our crystal katana. Um, I love it. I have seen, I think it's Studio Cadia has one um, very similar in nature. Theirs is a pretty clear um, barrel with something sparkly in the middle. We, we don't have one. I, I've just seen it being used. I've seen uh, pictures. Uh, but this one has wood handle. It has the wax at the end to pick up sequins and paper. And I absolutely love it. Um, it is on the pricey end. However, if you're in the States, Hobby Lobby is where we got ours. And I, of course, used the 40% off coupon on it because there was no way I was paying, I think it was 26, 26 or $27 for a pickup tool. Yeah, that's just a little, it's a little crazy in my opinion. So there is the finished card. So now I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to flip through real quickly um, the different um, pieces I've come up with um, to layer together out of the, the trimmed out pieces that we made from the jelly plate. And I'm just taking those as a background, taking a piece of the coordinated pattern paper um, or what pattern paper would coordinate with what I made um, with the jelly plate and putting that on top and then I'm going to turn those into cards as well. <clears throat> so I will post some pictures here at the end um, of the completed cards and um, I will just go ahead and speed this up through the rest of the process here. Quit gabbing and yapping your ear off and yelling at dogs, which now, of course, as I'm almost done, they're laying down being little angels. It's the joy of their life. <laughs> okay, guys, um, I if you're still with us, I truly... Shh, 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 shh. If you're still with us after this crazy episode, I truly appreciate you hanging in there to the end, and we hope to see you again. And please take care. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all this craziness with your uh, friends and cohorts and anybody else you know just has that crazy lifestyle. But we still love to art and craft and create. So take care, guys, and we will talk to you next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.